Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Enrique Gil Guevara. I am from Lima, Peru. And today I'm going to talk about the management of twin anemia polycythemia sequence TAPS. As an introduction, we need to remember the importance of diagnosing chorionicity at the first trimester of pregnancy, mainly because monochorionic twins are going to have worse outcomes than dichorionic twins, and also because ultrasound checks are going to be more frequent than dichorionic twins, mainly looking for complications in monochorionic twins such as TTTS, selective APR, and TAPS. TAPS occurs as a result of chronic and balanced fetal fetal transfusion through a small artery vein anastomosis in twins, as you can see in this picture, that share the same placenta, leading to anemia in one of the twins and polycythemia on the other one. The main objective of my presentation is to present the different antenatal management strategies in MCDA pregnancies with a spontaneous or post-laser TAPS. Regarding pathogenesis and diagnosis, we need to remember that these twins, monochorionic, are connected through placental anastomosis. And when one of them bleeds into the other through large anastomosis, as in this video, we're going to have twin to twin transfusion syndrome that occurs approximately in 15% of monochorionic twins, leading to polyhydramnios in one of the twins, the recipient, and oligohydramnios in the other one, the donor. In case of TAPS, we're going to have one twin bleeding into the other through small, tiny placental anastomosis leading to anemia in one of them and polycythemia onto the other one. TAPS can be spontaneous in 4% in of monochorionic pregnancies and in 10% of after laser for TTTS. That's why when we choose selective technique in the ablation of placenta anastomosis for TTTS, we could miss some peripheral tiny anastomosis that is less likely to happen when we have the solemnization of the ablation of this placenta anastomosis. When we check the placenta of TTTS, twin oligoamnios polydramnios sequence, we're going to find central and large anastomosis. And in case of TAPS, we're going to have small, tiny peripheral anastomosis. TAPS, when we have TAPS, the anemic twin is going to try harder to pump enough oxygen around the body, and this may lead to heart failure. In the case of the polycythemic twin, the blood is going to be thicker, and this could lead to blood clots, thrombosis in the circulation, and also to heart failure because the blood is going to be harder to pump. Regarding ultrasound diagnosis, in case of TTTS, mainly we're going to base the diagnosis in the differential of amniotic fluid between the twins. In case of TAPS, we're going to base the diagnosis on MCA peak systolic velocities. In the case of the anemic twin, the MCA is going to be over 1.5 moms, and in the case of the polycythemic twin, it's going to be less than 0.8 moms. So, when we talk about the ultrasound findings, mainly we need to classify these tabs into stage one when the differential in velocities is more than 0.5 moms, stage two when it's more than 0.7, stage three when it's cardiac compromise of the donor or abnormal doctors in the ductus venosus, for example, stage four when it's high drops in the donor, and stage five when it's intraditor in the mice of any of them. Other ultrasound findings are related to placenta dichotomy, as you can see in this video, cardiomegaly, and also in the, in the donor, in the anemic twin, and in the polycythemic twin, we can have a starry sky liver as a result of the blood congestion in this organ. Regarding management, there is no one best antenatal management option for TAPS. And that's why different options include expectant management, preterm delivery usually after 30 weeks, Fetoscopic laser surgery of the placental vascular anastomosis, usually less than 26 weeks. Intrauterine transfusion in the donor with plasma exchange in the polycythemic twin, usually done between 26 and 30 weeks. And selective reduction, something that we do not do in Peru. Based on this paper by Tolenar, about uh, 370 cases with spontaneous or post-laser taps, 31% of them have expectant management, 30% laser, 19% IUT, 12% uh, preterm delivery, 8% selective filicide, and 1% termination of pregnancy. And regarding the results, perinatal mortality occurred in 17% in the spectrum management group, 18% in the laser, 18% in the IUT, 10% in the delivery group. And severe neonatal morbidity occurring 49% in the delivery group, 46% in the IUT, 31% in the spectrum group, and 31% in the laser group. So, in conclusion, we can say that TAPS is an uncommon prenatal finding. Nevertheless, its incidence seems high enough to recommend screening by MCA peak systolic velocity measurements. 
The identification of placental dichotomy in addition to fetal cerebral dopplers may lead to early identification on TAPS, and also the treatment for this condition differs considerably among fetal therapy centers. That's why perinatal mortality and morbidity were high, as you could see, in all management groups, but prolongation of pregnancy was, be be was best achieved by expectant management and laser surgery. Thank you very much.